saying wheat connection Thank you for joining us here this morning on Flow B TV. We're playing the uh, bass guitar made from a beehive. And we're also going to harvest some honey. It's kids Q&A this morning. So if you're about this big or smaller, you can ask questions, put them in the comments and we'll get to it. And I've beamed in Trace, who's usually with us at the office, but we're in lockdown. So she's not here and she is coming out of my pocket. There's a voice coming out of my pocket. Trace, are you there? Excellent. Give us a thumbs up, anyone, if you can hear Trace coming out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a bee suit like yours. Ah, well, yes. Uh, last time I wore this bee suit on camera, I actually put it on to fly off the top of a mountain to deliver the first flow hive in the world to the winner of the Vanuatu fundraiser competition where we raised $100,000 to give to the aid of the Vanuatu cyclone. So. If somebody could put that link in the comments below of the drone bee delivery, that would be cool. That's a fun thing to watch. Now what we're going to do is get some honey out of this hive here. So I've got a tube which is going right, now let me see, here. And I'm going to insert it into the hive. I'm going to put the jar underneath and then all we need is a special key to turn the frame from being in hexagon cells into pathways for the honey to flow down and out into the jar. If you've got questions, put them in the comments below. Kids Q&A today. We're in the lockdown here in New South Wales, Australia. So I'm just going to turn that now. And what we're going to see pretty soon is the honey coming out of the tube. Now, let's do that again. Okay. Now what's happening inside is these hexagon cells are going beep, and the honey's going to flow down into this trough at the bottom then out into this jar hopefully. Now if we're lucky my kids are somewhere around here as soon as honey starts flowing they come running so we'll see what happens there. Now looking around here, oh yes I can see honey starting to come down the tube and soon it'll be yummy honey in my honey pot. Mmm, honey. There it's coming. It's been a bit of a cold night here. It was a bit of a cold snap, so the honey's moving slower today. Yum, yum, yum. I have to say, I do love honey. Any questions coming in, Trace? Yes, these are some great questions coming in, and this is, um, hopefully you can all hear me out there. This is Tessa, who's age seven, um, wants to know, how do the bees get into the hive? How do bees get into the hive? Now, let me see. They must be getting in somewhere around here. Ooh, it's not on this side. Let's have a look around here, past this kale in the garden. My sister, the bee spy, who lives here with us is holding the camera and here we go there's the bees flying in and out of the hive and they're free to come and go they're not locked in like many other animals who are penned in to a paddock or in a cage they're free to come and go and sometimes they do all just leave or sometimes just half of them leave but mostly they stay because they like the homes we give them great question Back to their home? Well, bees are pretty, pretty amazing little insects. They travel really far, like six miles, ten kilometers away, which is so far to fly when you've only got tiny little wings and you're only this big. They can fly ten kilometers. Imagine that. It's incredible. So off they go looking for flowers. Now, what happens is some bees in here, their job is to look for flowers that have nice amounts of juicy nectar. So they fly out. They find those flowers, they come back in the dark, inside the hive, they do a dance and tell the other bees exactly where the flowers are. And usually it's within, say, three kilometres, but sometimes it'll be as far as ten, and the other bees will follow. But you know what happens if the flowers run out and they get there and there's no nectar in the flowers anymore? 
they'll come back and they'll find that bee in the hive and they'll jump on it and hold it down so it can't dance anymore. And that way they're able to tell when it, where, where the flowers are and able to say when the flowers are no good anymore and communicate everything they need to to get the bees to uh, go and get all of that juicy nectar and turn it into honey. Ah, well, you know, some bees do stay out the night. They camp out and they'll, they'll get on a leaf like this and they'll hang on to the bottom and they'll shelter there all night and they'll come back the next day. So they will stay out the night if they have to, but they're actually pretty good at flying in the rain. They can get a little bump from a raindrop and do a flip in the air and then just keep flying home. So mostly they make it home. to know what flowers do they like best and what's their favourite colour. Okay, now this little bee jumped in the honey. That's a bit naughty, you know, jumping in the honey. But you can't blame them, bees love honey too. So bees' favourite colours, well they like all sorts of flowers and the main thing is the sweet nectar but they do love purple flowers. Mm. <laughs> you can see it cleaning it. It's um, self here. It's a beautiful thing to watch. If I just put that back on the landing board, the other bees will lick any honey that's stuck on her and she will be just fine. Okay, put that back on this side. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you were about to eat that bee, Cedar. Well, I'll, I don't eat bees. I'm, um, yes, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat bees. <laughs> there are other things that eat bees around the place. Like we have these toads, that, cane toads, and they can get like this big and they love eating bees. They dong on the hive at night time. And then what happens is the guard bees come out to see what's going on, who's knocking on the door. And cane toad, big tongue, gobbles the bees up and it'll do that all night and that's why we put it up on this little stand in order to get it off the ground so those cane toads don't eat our bees. Any get more the, questions? Get questions coming in. Fantastic. Well, um, Kai's asking if a cane toad does eat a bee, will it get stung? Well, it doesn't seem to. I mean, they either do or they don't care, but you'd think, you know, that the tongue and the mouth and everything would get stung for sure. But anyway, maybe they like getting stung. I'm not sure. <laughs> so now we'll go back to that question. I think we got distracted when the bee landed in the honey. Uh, this was the question from Rosie. Just wondering what... Um, oh, no, you did answer that one about the colour. OK, no, catch up, Trace. So... Lucas is asking, <laughs> sorry about that kids, Lucas age nine and he wants to know how many bees are there in one hive? Ah, well, a, a colony that's really busy, let's have a look in the side window and see what's going on. So this one isn't very busy right now actually, which is kind of good because it's springtime and, and uh, if they're really busy now, what tends to happen is half of them take off and form a new colony but it's a nice slow build up. You can see them coming for the light actually, as they're, they're coming to the window here now. But when a hive is really busy, they can have 50,000 bees, which is absolutely incredible. And if you do the maths on that, the bees can pollinate 50 million flowers a day, which is insane. It's wild. It's like no other insect on the planet can do that for us. And that's why humans have dragged them all around the world, wherever they go, because they're such incredible pollinators and we all know if we don't pollinate the flowers we don't get the fruits we don't get the nuts and the trees can't reproduce oh fantastic so now look at all that question aiden's got one about light and he's wondering will the bees be attracted to the light of the fire at night uh, not usually a fire um but they will go for a light like if you've got a bright light 
at the front of your house and you've got your beehive really close to the front of the house where the entrance of the hive can see the light, you'll find you'll get a few bees buzzing around that hive, a bit confused about what's going on. questions coming in we're doing kids live q a today so if you've got questions anything about bees pop it in the question box below and we'll get to answering them this is this is a good one now that you're getting your kids to see her is christine has um has a seven year old um called annabelle and she wants to know what sort of jobs can kids do when they get the flow hive well they can jar up the honey uh, they can have a lot of fun put, putting lids and labels on and then you're putting them out by the roadside. You might start a stall or you might give them away to your neighbours or things like that. But also they can get in a bee suit and, like this and actually start helping doing the beekeeping. Charlie loves to get in there and hold up frames and um, have a look at what's going on in the hive. Are you you guys want to come have us some honey? You've got some more jars, that's great. This is Jali oh, and Mella. Mella's name means honey. And we've got some honey there. What do you think? Mm -hmm. You reckon? Okay. Any more questions? Put yeah. Um, Nate, age six, is saying, do bees pee and poop? <laughs> well, they do actually. Have you ever noticed little yellow dots that get all over the place? You can see a couple of yellow dots on this roof here. I don't know if you can see over here, little yellow dots. Now, if you have to scratch and sniff there, you can actually notice that that is poo. And it's bee poo. It's like pooey pollen kind of in its fragrance. And that's the bee's poo. So they certainly do, and they don't poo inside the hive. They're very organized and they'll only poo outside the hive. What can you see there, Mel? <laughs> All right, well, we've got one full jar of honey, almost. And do you want to put another jar under? Okay, we can. You can do it. Charlie's got, Charlie's got grand plans to, to start his own hive and sell the jars so he can buy some Lego. <laughs> Fantastic. Cedar Debbie's asking for her 11 year old. Eliza, why did you invent the flow hive? Ah, that's a great question. Now, the reason why I invented it, because I was harvesting honey in the conventional way, which that means taking the hive apart, taking the frames out, you're in your bee suit, you've got your smoker, you're taking those frames to a processing shed, which in this case was the shed that I lived in as well, which is just down the hill here and it's all a big sticky mess and it takes all weekend to get your honey that way. You've got to put it in this big spinning machine and spin all the honey out. And then you've got to get those frames and take them back to the hive again. And the bees get quite annoyed about it mm. in the whole process. And I thought, far out, this is a lot of work. Can't we just pipe it out of the hive? Like just turn a tap and the honey comes out. And that's what sparked a decade long journey of inventing with my father to invent the flow frames. And it's uh, been a wonderful thing to be able to share it with you all out there where now there's a lot of people around the world harvesting honey in a completely different way and being able to enjoy this experience of the honey just flowing out into your jars. What's the honey taste like, kids? Um, it tastes quite a, look, a lot like... Um, uh, tastes a lot like... Can I have a try? Yeah. It's very strong honey. It strong is. honey, it is, isn't it? Yoink. <laughs> what's, what's your favourite flavoured honey? Ooh. Mm. What's your favourite thing to have honey on? Toast. Ah. Toast. 
Oh, <laughs> oh toast. Yum, is that for me? No. <laughs> ah, you can just pop it right under there if you want. More oh, yummy. Honey on toast. Grizzle, grizzle, grizzle. Thank you. No. Nope. Hey, hey, Jarley. This Where's is, your jar? You got to put your jar back. Yeah. Question for Jarley. Yeah. Hey, Jarley. Uh, Archie's aged five and wants to know why is all the honey different colours? Any ideas? Um, because the honey's from different flowers. Good answer. Right. So each flower has different tasting honey or different tasting nectar that turns into honey and also different colours. Uh, yum, yum. Uh, yum. Oh, here's a good Papa. question. This is, this is a Papa. question from Papa. Ben who's 12 Papa. and he's just walked into the room and he's watching it and he's just wondering, will the bees sting their chickens and will the chick because he's got chickens, or, and will the chickens eat the bees? Uh-huh. Well, mostly chickens and bees get along quite okay. And the person to answer that question is probably someone by the name of Fred Dunn, who knows a lot about chickens and a lot about bees. But as far as I know, they get along quite okay most of the time. But I have heard of issues where um, there's been a particularly grumpy hive that has stung chickens, but otherwise they just get along fine. And you will actually find a nice symbiotic relationship where the chickens will eat the small hive beetles, which are a pest that can annoy beehives. Uh, oh, this is amazing. Excited, he's 12 years old and really excited because they've got their flow hive and they're doing a split on Sunday. So that's pretty exciting, and um, hopefully, you can watch some of those great videos we've got on how to split your hive. Ah, yes, yeah, absolutely. Doing a hive split's a fun thing to do, and it also gives you a whole nother beehive, which is fantastic. It's my, my favorite thing to do in springtime because sometimes the bees are really breeding up and it's a good idea to take a hive split because otherwise they'll split themselves and half of them might fly away over the hill to somewhere else. So if you take your hive splits in spring when the bees build up, then they probably won't do their swarmy thing where half of them fly up. Uh, now, Mella, you seem to be loving that honey. Have you got, do you love having your honey on toast or on your fingers? On toast. On toast. Mm. She loves yeah. honey pretty much anyways. Look, she's also got socks on. There we go. Oh. Um, here's a good one. How fast do bees fly? <laughs> buzzy, buzzy, buzzy bees. Um, they fly. They can fly up to about 40 kilometres an hour, which is quite fast. If you put your hand out the window, which you're not supposed to do, and going 40 kilometers an hour, you can feel that wind on your hand. And imagine being able to fly that fast as a little bee, it's incredibly quick. And they zigzag their way towards where they're going in what looks like a bit of a zigzag, but it's actually a fairly straight line, which is where the word bee line comes from. Ah, yes. Well, it's a bit of a mystery how a hive can organise itself. Like, there's a queen bee, but she's not running around telling everybody what to do. In fact, the hive can get along okay for a while without the queen at all. So, what is it? Who's making up the decisions on who does what? And it seems to be some sort of group consciousness where somehow the hive together, 50,000 bees, are able to decide what needs to get done and get it done. So one bee might just make one tiny part of a wax cell in the brood box down here, and the other bees know that they can just join in and keep completing that um, amazing pattern. And then what can happen, let's say if, um, if you move your beehive and all the foragers go into some other hive because you've taken it away in the middle of the day, then a whole lot of the bees in the hive will change jobs and turn into forager bees, which are the bees that go out and get the nectar and pollen. So somehow they're able to organize themselves, change jobs as they go. The first job they do is clean the cell they emerged out of as a young baby bee. And then they go and 
feed babies and things like that in the hive and then they start to get new jobs they could be undertakers where they're carrying out bees that might have died in the hive and then it's about halfway through their life that they might be able to go out and collect nectar and pollen from flowers and the last job in their short life which may only last a month as a worker bee is collecting water and bringing that back into the hive for cooling bees are amazing at air conditioning they like to keep the hive at a very special temperature in order for the babies to survive and they do that by fanning and collecting water and fanning that water to cool the hive and when they want to warm the hive they disconnect their wing muscles and vibrate and that warms up the hive so they're able to cool and they're able able to warm the hive and keep it all going so who knows how they decide who does what but it's amazing piece of uh, of nature having uh, so many bees able to organize themselves we call it a super organism great questions it's fantastic and um Wanting to know, hey Charlie, do you ever get stung by the bees? Do you get mm. stung, Charlie? Yeah. And how does it how does it feel? It hurts a little bit. So, yeah. so Charlie got stung beekeeping the other day inside a hive. Dad was getting a bit relaxed, didn't bother getting the gloves. He was pulling frames out of the hive with no gloves on. Best to start off with gloves, all you new beekeepers out there. <laughs> And um, and he put his finger on a bee and got a sting, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Ouch, 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 and we got the stinger out, and then you kept beekeeping. Way to go. Uh, way to go. <laughs> hey, we just had a, a good comment from Chuck, actually, who's one of our ambassadors, and he was just saying last Saturday on National Honey Bee Day, had lots of kids visiting his honey stall, and they all earned a I Found the Queen sticker after seeing the queen in the observation hive. Oh. Uh, they also yeah, they got oh. honeybee sheets, Daddy, colouring yeah, sheets. He goes, lots of new beekeepers out there, and thanks to the flow hive. Ah, uh, excellent. Yes, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be inspiring so many new beekeepers. And what a cool thing to be able to have an observation hive and spot the queen. It's like playing Where's Wally, isn't it? In, in the US, they say, Where's Waldo? And it's, uh, it's like looking at all of these bees. Now, this hive doesn't have an excluder, so technically the queen could be up here, but she's usually not. And she's a bit longer. She's got a pointy bum. She's got a a uh, shiny back plate at the top and bigger legs. But otherwise, she looks very similar to all the other bees. Hard to spot, so well done, whoever spotted the queen. Cedar Eric's asking, how, do, how does a queen become a queen? And how do they know which one is the queen? Oh, there's this big word called epigenetics, where, where in DNA code in a bee, you can turn on and off genes. Now, what the switch is for bees is plant proteins. So as soon as a young larvae is fed plant proteins, it'll turn into a worker bee. If it's not fed plant proteins, which is pollen, it'll turn into a queen. So the queens are only fed on what's called royal jelly, which is an excretion from the bees, and then they'll turn in to a queen bee, which means they supersize, they grow bigger legs, they have the ability to lay up to a couple of thousand eggs in a day. And it's amazing that they all start off as the same thing. Noisy plane. Yeah, yeah we've got a plane doing loops above us. Cool. <laughs> it's a flow hive delivery. <laughs> Ah, the queen. That's another thing that happens with the epigenetics. The queen will then live for up to six years compared to a worker bee just living for a month. So how's that? They start off as the same thing. One's fed one thing, one's fed another. One lives for six years, one lives for only a month. So kids, just watch what you eat. <laughs> mm. Okay. Oh, happy you're taking the side off there. Um, because people are asking, what does the capped honey look like? So, that is perfect. Ah, well, if...
if you have a look in the hive, you'll see honey that's been capped over by the bees. So the bees will decide that the honey's moisture content is low enough, they're wanting to make it nice and thick so it'll last and not go fermented and icky. And when they've got that moisture content low enough, they'll put the capping, which is just wax, over the top. It's a bit like putting the lid on a preserving jar and saying that that honey is good to keep for a long time. And that's what we want to see before we harvest the honey. Right. Right. So there is a question coming in about the colour of the roof because before you mentioned the colours that bees like. Mm. Um, so is it a good idea to make the roof the colour that they're attracted to, or does it matter? It won't matter at all which colour you paint the roof. You can paint it rainbows. You can paint it uh, blue, red. It doesn't really matter at all. It's more about the flowers and the colours. Bees have this crazy vision where they see an ultraviolet and flowers look different to them than to us. In one petal they might see all of these patterns and shapes and the bees are, are particularly attracted to purple flowers, but flowers in general, the ones that have nectar. Oh, this, this is a great one. Debbie here, Eliza, she asked a question before. Eliza's now demanding royal jelly for breakfast and I'm thinking, do you think Eliza thinks she might turn into a queen if she lives on royal jelly? Yes, well, that's right. Um, it could, could be possible. And humans, being humans, do harvest and eat royal jelly. And I'm not sure what the effect is. Let me know in a few years. <laughs> Fantastic. Cedar, so just a couple of people have noticed that the hive, they're just wanting to double check, is that hive sloping towards the rear? Is that why the honey drains out and doesn't get stuck in the hive? It, 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 that's absolutely right. Um, the slope is about three degrees backwards, which is just a little slope. It's like putting something um, a little bit less than an inch at the front, and it provides a, a gentle slope for the honey to drain down to the top at the bottom and out of the hive. Fantastic. The, the, the ridge cap where you put the honey on a roof, um, Matthew's asking, did you design it so you could put all your honey jars up there or was it just by accident? <laughs> that was just by accident actually, but it does make a nice spot to put lots of honey jars. It can look really cool. I've seen some people make these mad pyramids of honey jars right on top of the hive. And I'm sure there's some people out there where the wind's blown it over. And that would be a little bit sad if any jars broke. But mostly we just put a few jars on top. This one seems quite stable up there. It's a really dark honey. Here, in the winter time, we get this amazing dark honey. And it uh, can get so dark here, we cannot even see through the honey at all. This is more of a, a dark red color, this honey. Yes, everyone's noticing that, that the dark, it's so, it's so dark, it looks almost red as well. Um, Cedar, this is Eliza, age seven, is asking, are there any other girls in the hive apart from the queen? The, the, well, the worker bees are all girls, so most of the heart, all the worker bees do all of the work and they're all girls, and they don't usually lay eggs, but if the queen stops laying for some reason, then some of them will actually start laying eggs, but they're unfertilised eggs, and then that means they'll turn into only being able to lay male bees, which is a bit of a problem because male bees don't do any of the work in the hive. So in the end, what can happen if you lose your queen and the workers start laying eggs is you, the hive turns into a whole lot of lazy males that don't do the dishes or anything else in the hive and the whole thing collapses just like some share houses in Byron Bay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, so just wondering, do, do, what happens if you eat the bee poo? Kids love poo stories, don't they? Oh, um, well, I'm not sure. Should we have a taste? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure if bee poo is a delicacy. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not good to eat any kind of poo, kids. So um, <laughs> best, best not to eat it. next to a native beehive? It 
is. I've got native beehives and I have, uh, have the European honeybee, which is these honeybees, and they get along just fine. My sister's got about uh, 12 hives down here in the paddock below now, and there's two little native bees right there as well. And she loves to film them playing together on the flowers. Mostly they get along just fine. And sometimes you'll see a native bee actually going, hey, this is my flower. And they're only a tiny, tiny, weeny little bee. I've got a shot of that. I'll have to post it on Facebook this week. Yeah, we'll post it. We'll post a shot of that. She caught some action. Mostly when I've been filming them on flowers together, they've just been happily doing their thing. But in this case, one little native bee was saying, hey, back off, big bee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, so queen breeders will put a coloured dot on their queens often and why they do that is so it's easier to spot next time but also the colour is a code for the year so they'll choose a different colour next year and that way you can get an idea of how old your queen is and go wow that queen's been, been in my hive for five years because it might have been a green dot from five years ago. Yum yum. Oh, I'm seeing bees over here. Okay, Mira. Maybe a last question. Mira the bee spy is is spotted some bees foraging on these rocket flowers. It's a nice idea to let your things go to seed in the garden. It creates more forage for bees and pollinators. And you see native bees coming into your garden to get those and you see the European bees and it's a wonderful thing to leave spaces to just go a bit wild. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Oh, fantastic. It was actually to do with the garden and noticing, have you got some lavender there? I'm wondering what sort of lavender plant you had in your garden? Ah, uh, no, this isn't lavender. It's a type of basil that flowers and flowers and flowers all the time, all year round, which is fun. And you can see the beautiful flowers here and the bees do like them, although I can't see any foraging right now. But it's a beautiful um, perennial basil. Um, so it's nice to have some flowers that go right through the winter here. Grasshoppers, grasshoppers are returning, it's the springtime. Thank you very much for tuning in everyone and for all your great questions kids. We'll keep answering them in the chat below and good luck in the lockdown if you're in New South Wales here in Australia. Make sure you get out in the garden. It's a wonderful thing that, that's come out of a, a challenging time is the, the need and want to get back into the garden, playing with the bees and the trees and the flowers. So get out there.